Hey class, how are you doing? Thought I would step out of the world of chemistry, although within the confines of science and talk about the other two Nobel Prizes, I'm not going to talk about the economics, peace, or literature prizes. I'm going to stick to the, uh, the three sciencey ones. So here is uh, the one on medicine or physiology as Alfred Nobel, the doctor of death, now known for his prizes. Um, this, the, uh, the physiology was given to a single person. So, uh, this means that this person, generally speaking, is really the master of his or her field. Uh, and whereas if you see the other ones are split between three people. So literature is given to one piece is usually given to an individual or a institution and, um, uh, well, uh, economics uh, and chemistry and physics this year were all split. So, but, uh, so, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name, Savante Pabo, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm sure I'm butchering it in, uh, in Swedish, uh, but he uh, got his Nobel Prize for sequencing DNA of um, various, uh, well, I don't know, proto-humans, you know, before humans, human ancestors. Uh, and, uh, well, he looked in the bones and also uh, taking some of this ancient DNA and sequencing and not just Neanderthal, but Denisovan. So this is a, so Neanderthal's and Denisovans, they're, they're human, I mean, guess non-homo sapiens, sapiens, um, species that are now extinct, but we are seeing, uh, some of the genomes of these two other species in, in our own species. So, uh, basically speaking, uh, to, to be a member of the same species, if you have an offspring, if that offspring is fertile, then you are the member, a member of the same species. Uh, so for very similar species, uh, this, this gets kind of mixed. You can have uh, two animals that are uh, if they're similar enough, their offspring can be fertile. And so then, you know, the, what is a species, what is a natural species becomes a little bit, you know, fuzzy, you know, but um, this, his work here was incorporating these two genomes into, uh, into, I uh, say modern human contemporary, although modern is 1950, but where humans haven't evolved much since 1950. So looking at those, so this is, this is what one of the Nobel prizes was. And, and the, the biggest piece of information from this, or at least the the uh, what I thought was interesting. The point was that we're more similar than we're dissimilar, is one of the things he said. And um, in terms of animals and other species of animals, many other species of animals have subspecies, and uh, humans doesn't work that well. We're from from this. He says we we've intermingled so much that uh, I mean it's it's hard to say that we have subspecies of humans i mean you know, like uh the nazis nazi germany try to say that there are three great races so caucasoid mongoloid negroid and some of that still kind of exists this day i mean there's others you can see astroloid for for uh australia but i mean a lot of that is is i mean going back to nazi science and the idea that there is kind of a a master race of sorts, but there, there's not. I mean, there's no master race of humans. There's only humans. So, and part of being human is also the fact that we have these other uh, hominid species within our DNA and showing that we've always really mixed and intermingled quite a bit. And if you compare that to someone like tigers, you have Amir or Siberian tigers, you have Bengal tigers, you have Sumatran tigers, and and they are really uh, separated and they don't really intermingle. Whereas humans, we've always intermingled. So, 
part of that is is the uniqueness of humans with this. So at least that's my my take on on his work. Uh, and the other one I wanted to talk about is physics. So physics and looking at quantum entanglement. So uh, this is very interesting. Um, so what is considered to be the speed limit for the universe is the speed of light, saying that you can't go faster than the speed of light. Uh, well, there are a few instances where you can break the speed of light. And maybe I should say speed of light in a vacuum. So if you look at a diamond, for instance, a diamond has a very high index of refraction, which, mean, which means light travels slowly in diamonds. Uh, you can get electrons, beta electrons can, can travel faster than light in a, um, in a diamond. Uh, so, but I also want to say that it's not the speed of light in a vacuum. Electrons traveling in a diamond are still going less than 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters a second. So that's the speed of light in a vacuum. The electrons are not traveling faster than the speed of light in the vacuum, but they can travel faster than light because light is slowed down in a diamond, if that makes sense. So uh, the other time that you can break the speed of light, and this is where we're looking at it, which is uh, is is a is a, um, a phenomenon called quantum entanglement. So if you have two or more states, and if they are quantum mechanically coupled, uh, anything that happens to to one of the states happens. The information is carried out instantaneously. So f and and faster, essentially faster than the speed of light. So there is no time delay uh, from information. If you take two particles and you spread them out over distances and they're quantum coupling, and if they if they have some sort of uh, quantum coupling going on, then let's say you 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 hit this uh, state with with an event, the information will be instantly instantaneously transferred to the other state, and uh they we've observed this in the laboratory and the what we're looking at doing this for is the um is is for information so like uh for for having uh information travel faster than the speed of light so right now it's it, i mean we don't really notice it here on earth right but let's say we went to mars okay and we had a colony on mars and uh, depending on on the uh, the distance between the Earth and Mars, I mean it's it's uh, it can be as long as, as a half an hour. Can can you imagine, right? If you you know want to call someone and 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 like, hey, how is your day going? Then you'd have to wait a half an hour to hear the response. Well, it would be it would be an hour because it would take a half an hour to go from Mars to the Earth, and the person say, "I am fine. How are you?" You know, and they have to wait another hour. So it's that's that's one of the issues with using the speed of light for for transfer of information. Let's say instead you had uh, something that had two uh, quantum coupled states. Uh, that way, information and specifically we we would call them qubits. Uh, so a bit is one and zero. A qubit is one zero or a in between state. Uh, so you can you can transfer qubits of information instantaneously. And uh, so this remind I'm so I'm showing my my nerdiness. There's an author called Orson Scott Card. He wrote a book called Ender's Game, and there is a um, they they have a device called an Ansible. That they can use to instantaneously communicate with with uh, other people. So, I mean, this would make something like an Ansible and an Orson Scott Card's universe possible. So that's that's what these these people their research about. And also uh, with quantum computing, which is a whole nother thing. Uh, it's not my area of expertise. I know a little bit about it, uh, but I mean, not. I have colleagues that study quantum computing. Uh, and it's it's uh, very very different than uh, our, like the computer that is being used to uh, to run my my MacBook that I'm recording this video off of. Quantum computers run differently. 
it's suggested, but we don't know, consciousness may in part be from quantum computing. We don't know that yet. We're still trying to learn about quantum computing and what it does. So, but um, quantum computing uses qubits instead of bits. A bit is a one or a zero, and a qubit, like I said, is a one, zero, or it's a superposition. It's, it's in between state, between one and zero. And if you have more than one qubit, then you can get more than one superposition, and it, it starts to act kind of like a wave. So uh, from this quantum computing, uh, it works very differently than classical, whatever, normal computing, uh, because normal computing, like I said, is one or zero, right? We have, it's very easy to have that logic stream, and now with quantum computing, it's not yes, no, it's kind of a yes, no, maybe, but if you include more and more qubits, your maybe becomes, you know, more question marks. The, the, the super, superposition states become much, much more complex. So uh, we're still trying to figure out quantum computing. Uh, we, we, can, we can do simple things with quantum computing. At least, at least that's what they're telling. Maybe there is some super awesome quantum computer somewhere that we, we don't know about. Um, but we've, been, we've used quantum computers to, to do simple functions. One of them was to factor 15. So uh, 15 is 3 times 5. So prime number factorization, 15, 3 times 5. And this is important because essentially what computers do is they do math very, very quickly. So uh, many of the logic functions that happen in computers have to deal with math, and they have to do with the ability to do math very, very quickly. The faster you can do math, the faster the processes are. The more math you can do, the more stuff you can do. So quantum computing, uh, and there's certain things that quantum computers are really good at, and uh, solving certain types of puzzles, converging to, to certain things. So converging, so if you're trying to solve something like an integral, integrals can, conf that's, that's an integral is a, is a math problem, a type of math problem, they converge. And quantum computers seem to be better at, at uh, things that, that require convergence for solutions. So uh, one of those is um, password breaking. So quantum computers are really good at breaking passwords, for instance, whereas a classical non-quantum computer uh, has to just brute force it with mathematics. So uh, that's that's in our future though. We don't we don't uh, we're not there yet in terms of our technology. We don't have uh, instantaneous communication yet. We don't have widespread use of quantum computers yet, but maybe in the future. So that's the the uh, interesting things about these Nobel prizes. So uh, and I know it's not chemistry, although chemistry is a physical science, so closer to physics. But I also want to include the physiology because. That's still, it's a, it's a sign. Not that, not that uh, literature in peace, prize, and um, economics are not important. I just, you know, want to try to keep this course, you know, talking about science as much as I can. And also with us all being human, right, like uh, Savante has shown, uh, being human has some, some uh, drawbacks, uh, meaning, you know, we need to eat, we need to... Uh, we need to sleep. We have basic needs. So if you, if you fellow humans, if you're finding your basic needs slipping, you know, please let me know. Also, as I stress with mental health, if you feel yourself being overly anxious, mental health is very important. Uh, if you need any help with this, please let me know. I, I will do whatever I can to help you guys out. So, okay. I know I've been having longer videos. Hopefully and they're not bothering you. I've been doing that this semester. I'm supposed to, the, the, the books tell me to keep it to, to like three to five minutes, but I've been going a little longer. If you think I should make them shorter, let me know. So I will say goodbye for now. And aloha.